Another Chinese AI company is all anyone is talking about. So is Manus's AI agent another deep seek moment, or does it represent something else entirely? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. If you want to have a sense of just how impactful deep seek was on the collective psyche of the AI industry, the conversations that have been happening around Manus over the last couple of days offer some pretty interesting insight. DeepSeek, of course, fundamentally changed how people thought about not only the relationship between Chinese and American AI, but their sense of the speed at which American AI companies were evolving. In other words, thinking it was somehow too slow. And it also really reinforced just how important giving even regular users access to the most advanced reasoning models was going to be when it came to popular perception. Part of why DeepSeek temporarily ran ahead of ChatGPT in the App Store was that they were offering access to an advanced reasoning model at that free level. Now, of course, the other reason that DeepSeek was such a moment that extended outside of the builders in AI was the notion that they had trained this model for just five and a half million dollars. That news came right at the time that Wall Street was trying to figure out if AI infrastructure is being completely overbuilt, with a major correction eventually coming down the pipeline. Obviously, those questions remain unresolved. And in the meantime, people are paying a lot more close attention to what's coming out of China, not just to see how far behind it is, but instead just on the merits of whether it might have something totally different and more advanced. And that's the context for this moment that happened with Manus. Over the weekend, a new agent called Manus went completely viral. The Discord for the project swelled to 138,000, and some reported that invite codes were selling for thousands of dollars on Chinese social media platforms. The demo showed a computer use agent that was capable of things like building a website from scratch, planning a trip, analyzing financial markets and generating reports, designing interactive courses for teachers, as well as comparing insurance policies and assisting with business sourcing. In the viral demo video, founder Yi Chao Peak Ji said, Manus isn't just another chatbot or workflow. It's a completely autonomous agent that bridges the gap between conception and execution. We see it as the next paradigm of human-machine collaboration. The Manus team also claims top ranking on the Gaia benchmark, beating every rival agent in AI autonomy, problem-solving, tool usage, and web interaction. And once people got their hands on it, the rave reviews started to pour in. Indeed, I think the word breathless would be appropriate for how people initially were talking about this. The rundown's Rowan Chang writes, I think China's second deep seek moment is here. This AI agent called Manus is going crazy viral in China right now. Probably only a matter of time until it hits the US. It's like deep research plus operator plus cloud computer combined, and it's really good. Now, as this will come up in a minute, Rowan also makes clear that this is not any sort of paid endorsement. He continues, we noticed Manus gaining some traction at the rundown and wrote about it in the newsletter this morning. Shortly after publishing, one of the co-founders reached out with an invitation code. So I dropped my work for the morning and tested it out. Rowan's test included creating a biography on himself and deploying a website based on that. He said that the info was 100% accurate with info up to date as of today. And then he tried a number of other tests as well. Dean Ball writes, It is wrong to call Manus a deep seek moment. Deep seek was about replication of capabilities already publicly achieved by American firms. Manus is actually advancing the frontier. The most sophisticated computer using AI now comes from a Chinese startup, full stop. Bilawal Sidhu writes, I tested Manus AI. It's the closest thing I've experienced to a truly autonomous AI agent. I can't wait till this thing can use desktop apps like Premiere and Photoshop. It low-key feels like baby AGI. Menlo Ventures' Didi Das writes, Manus, the new AI product that everyone's talking about, is worth the hype. This is the AI agent we were promised. Deep research, plus operator, plus computer use, plus lovable, plus memory. Lovable, by the way, is a text-to-code generator that's become very popular, in case you were wondering. Didi continues, asked it to do a professional analysis of Tesla stock, and it did around two weeks of professional-level work in around one hour. One of the more interesting tweet threads came from McKay Wrigley, who you can watch get more and more excited throughout the thread. He started, Watch a 14-minute demo of me using Manus for the first time. It's shockingly good. Now imagine this in two to three years when it has over 180 IQ, never stops working, is 10 times faster, and is run in swarms by the thousands. AGI is coming. Expect rapid progress. He continues, Manus is way better than everything on the market, but it's also not going to automate you away right now. I hope the US labs respond with a great wave of releases. I do really want to emphasize that both the agent under the hood and the actual UI are both incredibly well done. It's legitimately impressive, and as a reminder, I don't do paid posts. I saw the viral post and kind of went, yeah, doubt it's that good, and boy, was I wrong. He then continues later. Okay, after further use, I'm doubling down. If OpenAI released an equivalent called Deep Task and charged $1,000 a month for unlimited usage, I'd pay for it in two seconds, creating an entire research report and spec based on my preferred tech stack from latest versions. WTF. 
Next, he writes, All right, I'm starting to freak out a little bit. I may have undersold this. LMAO, it's writing a literal step-by-step guide from up-to-date docs with all the code for everything. Finally, he writes, Without exaggeration, I'm genuinely being super earnest about this. I think this experience has shifted my worldview a bit. That was basically 80% of what I imagine experiencing AGI will be like. Literally thought this was going to be vaporware, and now I'm amidst an existential crisis. Now, McKay also pointed out that under the hood is Claude 3.7 Sonnet. In other words, Manus didn't invent some new model that we didn't have access to yet. That'll become important in a few minutes when we get a little bit deeper into our analysis. Brian Romley sums up, We just moved from chat AI era to agent AI era. The China DeepSeek R1 AI moment stunned the world. Now we have the Manus moment. But if this is the Manus moment, what does that actually mean? In my opinion, the Manus moment, to the extent that we're calling it that, is not really about China catching up with the U.S. or China exceeding the U.S. Instead, it's about people seeing some of the first expression of what a real agentic experience is going to be like. Agents are, of course, every other word out of everyone's mouth at this point in AI. But we are still very, very much in the infancy of their capabilities the agentic type experiences that we have access to, particularly OpenAI's deep research, have definitely started to give some people a sense of just how differentiated they're going to be. And in a lot of ways, I don't think it's inaccurate to view Manus as deep research, but kind of for everything, instead of just for research. And one of the really important things here is that the innovation is not, as I mentioned, about the underlying model. It's about how the pieces have come together. Professor Ethan Malik writes, The current frontier LLMs are very good, and their abilities have not been fully explored even by the labs making them. Too much waiting for mysterious new LLMs, too little pushing what we have. And I think that's a really accurate description of what's going on with Manus here. Manus has embedded these LLMs in a UI that allows them to really push, both be pushed by their operators and to push themselves to achieve more. Aidan McLaughlin writes, If your opinion of Manus changed after discovering it's a newer sonnet wrapper and not some trained-up potatoes underground Chinese lab leak, you've lost the plot. I don't care if it's a wrapper, it created value, it deserves my respect. Care about capabilities, not architecture. And I think this is a hugely important point. A huge amount of what we interact with from here on out is going to be an experience or data wrapper that sits on top of an underlying model. A lot of the things that feel most innovative and unlocking are not going to be that because of model performance increases, but because of the specifics of how the user experience is brought together. 0.005 seconds writes, The whole Manus AI thing is showcasing what a lot of people have already internalized. The models are already AGI grade. And the last steps are how nicely we scaffold perception, context memory, and the for loop. If you are at all serious about building literally anything in the AI space, you need to be internalizing this immediately. The models will get better, smarter, denser, faster, cheaper, multimodaler, bigger context, more accurate. The cost per token will drop by 90% next year. There is no possible experience with LLMs made non-viable with cost or capability that will remain so in 12 months. You shouldn't be building with today's capabilities, but with next year's. The crazy part is you don't even need to. The current models are egregiously underexploited. We're currently experiencing a human creativity deficit in AI development. We're not building wrappers fast enough user experience, context management, memory integrations, tool use. These are your moats. And I think that's the point. When you start to dig in and you get past the first wave of analysis, you can also find balance takes like this one from AI for Success, who writes, honest opinion after trying Manus for the last three days, here's the good and the bad. Good, the research it does on the internet and the reports it generates are incredible. Its ability to run scripts behind the scenes to execute tasks is impressive. The plans it creates to achieve tasks are well-structured, which is why the end results are so good. But on the bad side, it's slow, but I guess they can scale. It could use a longer context window, which would help a lot. It broke in between due to context issues while working on coding tasks. Sometimes the second iteration doesn't work as well, and it just gets stuck on web searches or certain tasks, making it difficult to control. Finally, the coding capabilities are good, but still behind Sonnet 3.7. Ultimately, none of that matters though, right? The point is that people are having a mental unlock moment with what an agent assistant that's not as constrained as something like deep research, is going to feel like having in their arsenal. Now, when it comes to the viral explosion, Manus is clearly smart enough to understand that DeepSeek has created an environment where people are waiting for the other shoe to drop. In other words, where people are waiting for the quote-unquote next DeepSeek. And there's probably a lot to unpack there around what that says around global geopolitics and competitiveness discussions. But I think when push comes to shove... The Manus moment really isn't about China. It's not about DeepSeek 2.0. Instead, 
It's about a true multi-purpose agent 1.0. This isn't a deep seek moment. It's a chat GPT moment where people are experiencing what's possible in a way that they hadn't been able to imagine until they saw it. The crazy thing for all of you out there is that this is just the very beginning. I predict that in just a matter of months, what we're calling an agent now with Manus will seem quaint, barely autonomous, unsophisticated in its planning, and a far cry from what we're using instead. But we always remember those first moments. And for many people, that's exactly what Manus has just given them. If you have used Manus, let us know your take. Spotify and YouTube comments are both open. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.